use that terminology, were those who believed in Allah. And so you could leave San Fernando and you could go to the holy state of Israel and you will be admitted. You need no visa. You following me? You need no visa. By virtue of the fact that you have faith in Allah, you believe in the one God, you are a citizen of that state. You could go and live there. You need no residence permit. Hmm? You could go and work there. You need no work permit. And you can participate in the affairs of the state by virtue of being a believer in Allah. You need no citizenship. This was the state, the holy state of Israel established by David alayhi salam and Solomon alayhi salam. It is this model of a state that Nabi Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam established in Medina. So don't come and tell us that the Islamic state is something terrifying, something that is obnoxious, something that is an aberration. No, because the Islamic state established in Medina was after the same model as yours which was established in Jerusalem by Pro prophets David and Solomon Allah's blessings be upon them both with one difference that when Nabi Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam arrived in Medina we were not the only people Muslims no there was a large and influential community of Jews who were there in Medina and who did not become Muslims and there was also a very large community of Arabs different Arab tribes who were still pagan they were not Muslims and so Nabi Muhammad met in Medina what can be described as a plural society similar to Trinidad if only the PNM and the UNC would study the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. What did he do? He preserved the model which came from David Alaihi Salam and Solomon Alaihi Salam, but expanded on that model to create what is unique and what is eminently suitable for Trinidad and Tobago today. He created a plural model of a state. The plural model of the state recognized all the different communities, Jews, Muslims, pagan Arabs, as units of the state. And recognized the political equality of all the units of the state. Number two, he took the initiative to negotiate over seven months to negotiate an agreement. As we can here in Trinidad with the Constitution Commission to negotiate a common agreement acceptable to all which preserve and protected all the basic rights and interests of the different constituent units of the state. And when that agreement was arrived at, and they didn't have that in 1962 when you had independence in this country, no. When that agreement was arrived at, then it was put in the form of a treaty or a charter. Today it is known 
as the Mithaq of Medina, the constitutional agreement of Medina, and written down, and it is the first written constitution in the world. But we don't have the time to dwell on that. Another day, another time, we can talk about that political philosophy. We have to make a journey in political history today. So let's leave that model, that sacred model. It is only after the Jews violated their treaty obligations and had to be expelled. And the pagan Arabs entered into Islam freely that the plural model was dismantled and the original model established by David salam, and Solomon salam, was restored. That is the Khilafah, the Islamic model of a state. I leave behind me two things. So long as you hold on to them, you will never go astray. The book of Allah and my sunnah. I quoted to you from the book of Allah, from Surah An-Nisa, the command of Allah which established this model of a state. Obey Allah. So sovereignty belongs to him. <laughs> Obey the Prophet to Islam. And so consequent upon Obedience of Allah, you must obey the Prophet to Islam. No Tom, Dick, and Harry can supersede Allah and His Messenger. And consequent upon obedience of Allah and His Messenger, now you obey your Amir. And you take the pledge to obey Him. Every minister has had a durad when they want to become minister in Mr. Manning's government. Eh? I leave behind me two things, the book of Allah and my sunnah. So long as you hold on to them, you will never go astray. And both the book of Allah and the sunnah had the khilafah, the Islamic model of a state. And when it is no longer in existence, when it has disappeared, what should I do? O Messenger of Allah, ask Huzaifa radiallahu ta'ala anhu. That hadith we have in this book, One Jamaat, One Amir, you'll find it at the back. He said, stay away from all those firaq, all those inauthentic expressions of Islam. Even if you have to hold on to the stump of a tree, and bite and chew its roots until death overtakes you. I do believe I have introduced the subject with sufficient force this morning that we can now return to political history. How did we lose the Khilafah? Allah's Messenger warned us of a time when war would be waged on Islam. Oh yes, he warned us. At that time he said that holding on to Islam would be like holding on to what? Hot coals. This is that time. If you holding on to Islam today and it feeling like Pomarak, or Tupitambo. Yeah, holding on to Islam. No? Go back home. If you're holding on to Islam today and it's feeling like hot coals, praise be to Allah. You're holding on to the right thing. And so he warned us of that time when they go come after us. Indeed, at the end of that war on Islam, things go be so bad, he said, that a man will pass by a grave 
I mean, we're talking about a Muslim, eh? not a part-time Muslim. A man will pass by a grave and he would roll on the grave and say, I wish I were in that grave rather than the dead man. Not for any religious reasons, but because of biting oppression. Mm -hmm. The war on Islam was launched in order for a certain goal to be achieved. There was a general goal, of course, to test you, to see whether you are made of iron and steel, Zubarul Hadid, or whether you are made of cardboard, <laughs> or recycled paper. Huh? What kind of Muslims are you? So that war on Islam was launched as fitna, a test and trial. Gog and Magog, with the subject you are now familiar with it. Al-Masih al-Dajjal, the subject you are familiar with it. And of course, Mr. Shaitan himself, Iblis. They launched this war on Islam. But there is a specific goal that they also seek to achieve in addition to the general goal. And that specific goal is number one, number one, to liberate the Holy Land for those Israelite people who rejected the true Messiah. Number two, to bring them back to the Holy Land to reclaim it as their own. Two thousand years after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had thrown them out for إِذَا جَاءَ وَعْدُ الْآخِرَةِ جِئْنَا بِكُمْ لَفِيفًا and so they brought back number three to restore in the holy land a state of Israel an imposter state of Israel and make it appear to be the holy state of Israel number four to cause that state of Israel to become the ruling state of the world. And this afternoon, inshallah, when we look at the subject of the implications of an Israeli attack on Iran, we'll delve deeper into that part of the subject. I hope you stay with us for this afternoon's lecture, and I hope you have lunch, inshallah. We have lunch ready for you. I think probably only $15 or so. And after Israel becomes the ruling state in the world, then, a man is born of Jewish parents and he grows up and he becomes the ruler of the state of Israel and he rules the world from Jerusalem the way George Bush is ruling from Washington. And he declares, I am the Messiah. And all them one-eyed people will accept him as the Messiah. Uh, but he ain't no Messiah at all. He is the false Messiah. He is El Masih Dajjal. And when they accept him as the Messiah, he rub his hand and he say, mission accomplished. I have to cut down on my Trinidadian English in this lecture because this tape had to go outside in the world as well. He says, I am the Messiah. And then Nabi Isa -Islam comes back and kills him. But before Nabi Isa -Islam can come, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises one who whose mission it would be to positively identify the true Messiah. The first time that Allah sent the Messiah, the son of Mary, and then of course his mother had to take him out of the Holy Land, they don't want to kill him. And after he'd grown into an adult, then he came back to the Holy Land, Jesus, alayhi when he came back, he came to the river Jordan. 